Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. All of us once in a while are asked to attend the funeral of some departed friend or relative. It's anything but a happy occasion, but it's an obligation that has to be fulfilled. Bill and Henry, for example, are returning to Ranger headquarters after attending the funeral of one of the old-time ranchers in the country surrounding Knotty Pine. They're just entering the office now. Well, old Dad Winters won't have to worry about ranching anymore. But he certainly lived to a ripe old age, didn't he? Yes, pal. If I live to be 91, I'll feel that I've stayed long enough here on Earth. His son, Les, will be able to carry on the ranching, however, and probably make this spread grow more than it has already. Dad Winters was a very good rancher. Yeah, and how? Has the best spread in these parts. Yeah, even in his old age, he kept up with all the new developments in ranching and agriculture. And he was a fine Christian besides, which is more than you can say for his son. Well, he was once interested in spiritual things. Then he left home, and I'm afraid since Lester came back from the service, he's been pretty cynical and ornery. Yeah, I'll say so. But he's mighty smart. Sure knows ranching and farming. But he doesn't know how to get along with people. And that's more important. Can't live by yourself in this world, pal. Well, I sure wish that Les would learn that. He will someday. Then it might be too late. I got it, pal. Hello, Ranger headquarters. Yes, how are you, Jay? Sure, be glad to. What's on your mind? That's a good idea. I'll be right over. Yes, goodbye. Was that the banker? Yeah, he asked me to come right over, Henry. Sorry you can't come along. He has to see me alone. Oh, that's all right, Bill. I can find plenty to do. Do you know what's up? No, Jay didn't want to talk over the phone. But his voice sounded worried to me. Well, Jay, what have you got on your mind? Bill, we've known each other a long time, haven't we? Yes. We've had a fine friendship. What's this leading up to? Sound like you're in trouble. I'd like to have your help on a matter of utmost urgency. Well, let's quit playing hang the butcher and spill it out. I can see that you're under some tension. Yes. You know, Bill, a lot of people think bankers are mighty hard-headed. And maybe some are, but I don't fit in under that category. Just now, I'm feeling pretty bad. Bill, you probably know that the ranch belonging to Dad Winters is an investment of this bank. Yes, I knew something to that effect. Why? We've got to foreclose on the mortgage. Mortgage? But, Jay, I thought... Yes, that... yes, uh, so did everybody else. We all took it for granted that Dad Winters had a lot of money. Well, not too much, maybe, but certainly enough to be comfortably well off. Oh, he lived comfortably all right, but... He had all his funds tied up in his ranch. Very little cash on hand. Well, how'd he get into this mess? Well, you know how the ranchers borrow from us to buy cattle to range and fatten. The cattle act as security on our loans. Yes, I'm well acquainted with that. You're also aware, of course, that there's been a considerable drop in the market price of beef. Yes. Well, Dad Winters borrowed from us, as usual, and then he was hit by the drop in the market just like a good many other ranchers. But Dad had no reserve. Now that he's dead, his estate will have to pay the difference between what the cattle will bring on the market and what we loan them. How much is the difference? $10,000. But the real trouble is that I tried to serve notice on Les Winters and I couldn't get to the house. He kept me away with rifle fire. Now, 
Uh, we walk keep long way now. Maybe we rest some. What you say, Stumpy? It's about time you hold up there, young feller. I thought you'd never stop. Maybe you're one of them there atomic energy <laughs> machines. <laughs> no, I'm not hot stuff. Just tired Indian. Like to get home someday soon now. <laughs> yeah, if you're like a horse headed for home. You just can't stop until you get there and put your nose in the feed bag. <laughs> I eat oatmeal, if that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someday I'll get ahead of you, Grey Wolf, but it had to be pretty early in the morning, I'm a-thinking. <laughs> I'm not right. But you're not bad yourself, Stumpy. Hey, I must be going around with calves on the brain, because I keep hearing critters bawling. I hear them, too. That's strange for them to be here. We find out why. Hmm, that's strange. Not much food in Canyon. That's right, Great Wolf. I wonder what them doggies are doing in there. Oh, I think we better look at Brand and then tell other. Uh, good idea. I might know how cattle get in this canyon. Can't see any openings. I think it is here. Canyon has a crazy zigzag opening at the end. Kind of hard for them critters to navigate. Then maybe I have right idea. Huh? What's that, young feller? I think cattle get trapped in here and can't get out. <laughs> Brand is Grey Wolf. Kind of fuzzy. I don't see things like that so good anymore. Uh, look, a flying double bar. Uh, oh, who owns a flying double bar? Sound familiar to me. Yeah. I ain't getting moldy in the brain. My forgetter is working better than I remember. Oh, I know that brand as well as an old man from door. You're not only one who have having trouble with brain. I know that brand too, Stumpy. Grey Wolf, I got it. That there flying double bar belongs to old Dad Winters. That's right. We better go tell that cattle trapped in Canyon. Yeah, I think they'll be sort of looking for them critters. So that's the story, huh, Jane? That's it, Bill. Pretty sad, eh? Yeah, it's a blow. But you can't help it. The bank has to make good on its loans, that's sure. After all, you're lending out the depositor's money. The thing I'm afraid of is what might happen to Lester when he gets the news. That's my chief worry right now. And you say you've already tried to see him? Yes, but he drove me away. Couldn't talk to him anyway. Hmm. Well, we'll have to do something about that. You have anything in mind? No, not yet. You can never tell what'll happen. Yes, sir, Bill. We saw them there cattle trapped in the canyon. You're sure they belong to Les Winters? Mm, not right. It right brand, all right. How many head of cattle are there? Oh, about a hundred, I'd say. Mm. That might fit in pretty well. Mm, have to get cattle out soon before something happened to them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, know that, fellas. It's not hard to get them out right now. Yeah. Well, suppose you fellas go after them and bring them in, huh? Les is short on cowhands since his dad died and left him broke. He doesn't have any cattle either. Had to sell a whole herd the other day to get some money. Of course, he didn't know about these hundred head, I guess. Well, they wouldn't bring in enough money to cover the debt, but it might help a lot. We go out Canyon and bring cattle in. It'd not take long. Fine. This will give me the excuse I need to go out and see Les Winters in person. Think Les will let you in, Bill? I don't know, Henry. I've been hearing some rumors about him keeping everybody off with rifle bullets. Yeah, I've been hearing them too. 
I wonder if they're true. Yeah, we'll soon find out. You mean you're going in there anyhow? Even if he shoots? Yeah. Yeah, but I wouldn't dare to die in order to prove it. I know this, that Les doesn't like anyone, not even himself. I know. He's probably so mad at himself, he won't even look in a mirror. Well, we'll soon find out what his attitude is. That's his place up ahead. Now, if he nails me, Henry, remember, I like purple dandelions. Don't joke like that, Bill. You're probably looking into the business end of a 30-30 right now. Come on, let's get on. Now, Bill, I want you to be careful. Uh Uh-oh. How about that? Okay, Smarty. Now, do you believe it's more than a rumor? Yes, Henry. Those little lead bees make me kind of (laughs) nervous. I shouldn't laugh. But you should have seen the look on your face when that rifle ball zinged right nearby. Uh, I can imagine. Have you got any ideas? I think I have. Let's go back to town. We'll talk about it. I'm going to get a portable power speaker, Henry. You know, one of those kind you carry in your hand. Looks like a megaphone. You going to talk to Lester with it? That's right. I'll talk to him a while before I go into the ranch house. You mean you're going inside that house after the reception we got today? Well, of course, I'll have to talk with him long distance first. And what if he isn't in a convincing mood? Then I'll probably have a couple extra holes in me for the effort. But I think I can convince him. What are you going to use for an argument? Those cattle Grey Wolf and Stumpy are bringing in. And anything else the Lord will send my way. <laughs> Bring them in. Hey, get him up, King. Let's go. Ah, the Come on, King. Get out of here. Get out of You got it put together, Bill? Sure have, pal. Now let's test it out with this battery. Uh, the battery better hold out. I don't want to be turning the hand generator. <laughs> don't worry. I put a new battery in the power pack. Now hold on to your eardrums. Here it goes. Pipe all hands on deck. Hello, Henry. Can you hear me? Testing. Testing. Hello, Henry. <laughs> Couldn't hear a word you said. Boy, if Les can't hear that, he's deaf. That's the way I figure it, pal. Now, perhaps I can persuade him to talk to me for a while. I sure wish we could make that guy use his head. He's a wonderful fellow at heart. But for all practical purposes, he's off his rocker. There are a lot of folks who are confused, pal. Even Christians get that way sometimes. Even though they have the greatest promise ever written. All things work together for good to those who love God. And what more could you ask for than that? Well, Henry, sometimes folks don't want to face reality. Sometimes they can't. They should learn when they're young to face an issue fair and square. That's the only way to overcome it. Is that what's wrong with Les? Basically, yes. He realizes for the first time that he's poor. And he's not trying to help himself even though he knows he's in trouble. But the simple fact of the matter is that no matter how he acts, he still owes the bank the money on the loan. And the bank has to take some of his property to replace the loan. Sure, it's a terrible blow to find out that your dad's died and left you penniless. But you can learn something worthwhile even from a situation like that. Yeah. I remember our teacher in school talking about farming and ranching as being big business. And that it took brains. Right. It takes a smart man to make a success out of ranching, farming, or anything else. 
Well, let's get some sleep. We'll call on Les Winters again the first thing in the morning. I wonder if he'll give us another hot reception. Hot lead, I mean. Somebody's at the door. I'll get it. All right, I'm coming. Bill Jefferson? Yes, I'm Bill Jefferson. Uh, won't you step in, please? Uh, thank you, Bill. Oh, Ed Banker, president of the Naughty Pine National Bank. <laughs> Didn't recognize you in the dark yet. Come on in. Have a chair. Thank you, thank you. Oh, what can I do for you? Uh, Bill, I've talked to J.D., and he's informed me of the part you're playing in this Lester Winters affair. Well, I'm not the only ranger in on this. Some of my men are helping out, too. I see. Bill, do you have time to listen to a story? Of course, I know it's bedtime, and I won't keep you up any later than necessary. Sure, I'll be glad to listen. Uh, what kind of story? The, it's one that may help keep the bank from foreclosing Les Winter's ranch. Huh? Uh, this story I got from my grandfather, Bill. And he's quite aware of all the facts, believe me. You know, it sounds strange. I've always been convinced the story I have to tell you has some basic truth in it. <laughs> Go right ahead, I'm listening. <laughs> Mr. Winter's grandfather, of course, settled here in the pioneer days. He and old Dad Winters, his son, lived in a crude shack on their present ranch. Lester's dad was just a young stripling when this all happened. In those times, they were still having Indian trouble. Well, this was even before this country became a territory. Pa, wh when do you think them Indians will attack? Do you think these nails, nails will hold the shutters closed? Now, don't fret none, son. Everything will be all right. I'm sure glad Mom went to visit her cousin. This is no place for her. That's right, son. Now, you get your rifle ready and keep a close watch on them trees. Do you think they'll try to come across cle the cleared land, Dad? Them redskins will try anything. That's what's worrying me. Now, like I said, don't fret, son. We'll make this all right. I hope so, but I've got a feeling. You just keep your eye looking through those rifle sights of yours. Stop talking. We'll be all right. Have you seen anything yet, Dad? Not a sign. Maybe it's just an idle rumor. Well, here, I'll make some lunch for both of us. Yes, I'm hungry, Dad. Keep your eyes open. If you so much as see a red-skinned toe, shoot it off. I'll get them. Hey, Dad, here comes a soldier. N now there's two of them. Hey, wait a minute, there's three. They're riding like anything, and they keep looking back. Uh, the engines must be hard after them. I'll unbar the front door. Keep watching for the way them soldiers come. Come on in here, man. Hurry, so I can get this door closed. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're so excited. I can't make head or tail out of what you're saying. Plop. Plop. It was ambushed back in a road piece. We're the only ones that got away. The Indians following you? Yeah. Then we have a fight on our hands. How many are there? About 50. That means only one thing. Unless we get help, none of us will get out of here alive. I'm afraid not. We've got to get a reinforcement from the fort. I'm afraid they won't get here soon enough. Son? You take my horse and ride out of here. No, Dad, I want to stay I here. I don't mind arguing with you now. Get moving. Get my horse. I'll bring the saddle. Okay, Dad, but I don't want to do You'd it. You'd better do it fast before them redskins get here. Goodbye, son. Now be brave and ride fast. Try to get some help from the fort. I don't want to leave, Dad. Honest, I don't. I don't want you to either, but your mother will need you now. Give her my love. Hey, mister, get that boy on work. Here come the engines. Son, come back here after this is over and look under the floor. That's where I've hid our savings. Under the floor, do you hear? Now, up with you. Get going.
lad got away from the Indians. That's right, Bill. Lester's dad got away. Unfortunately, however, the brave little band in the shack was wiped out. Well, sir, after the Indian trouble cleared up, Dad Winters married the young lady of his choice. The couple went back to the burned-out shack, uh, rebuilt over it, and started one of the biggest ranches in this part of the country. Mm -hmm. The young fellow never did look under the floor. Well, yes, he did. But presumably, he never found anything. But, Bill, I wonder if that money isn't still there. Or whatever it was. Gold, possibly. I don't know, Ed, but I'm going to find out if it's the last thing I do. Here's hoping Les is in a better mood today. <laughs> nope, he ain't feeling any kinder toward us. Now I'll try the power megaphone and see if I can convince him. You'll have to do some fancy talking if you ask me. Lester, this is Ranger Bill Jefferson. I'm not here to take you off your property. I'm here to help you. I've got news for you. Let me come in and talk to you. Now look, Les... Don't do anything you'll be sorry for. I've got news about cattle and money for you. I'm leaving my gun and badge in the car. And whether you like it or not, I'm coming in to talk to you. Are you ready to listen? All right, come on in. But one false move and you're a dead range, you understand? Well, uh, do you mind if I sit down, Les? No. Uh, what is it you want of me? Um, I'd feel better if you wouldn't point that rifle my way, Les. There. Now talk. Les, I've come to try to help you. <laughs> How? I happen to know all about the mortgage. And I've kind of made it my business to get you out from under why? Because I happen to be a friend of your dad's, that's why. How you figure on helping me? Well, for one thing, two of my rangers have discovered about a hundred head of your cattle trapped in the canyon off down what? the... Yeah. Now, that won't take care of all your debt, but at least it's something. Yeah, it's something. Anything else? Yes, there is. Do you happen to know of a story about buried gold in your house? <laughs> sure. Just a fairy tale, that's all. I'm not so sure, Les. I've heard the story just recently from mighty good authority. Who? Ed Banker. Ed? Yeah. And you know Ed Banker is not given to telling tall tales. No, no, he ain't. Well... Go ahead. What's the story this time? Nothing new. Same old story. But what if it's true? If it is true, why, well, the ranch is still mine. Exactly. Now, what I want to ask you is this. What part of the old house was incorporated in this new house that your dad built 70 years ago? Are you... Are you trying to find out where under the floor that money might still be? Right. Well, Ranger, that's where that story broke down. You see, when Dad built this house, he dug a cellar, and naturally the whole floor of the old house was torn up because the old house had no cellar. If there was any gold underneath that floor, Dad certainly have found it. I see. Well, I guess that pretty well takes care of the story, doesn't it? Isn't that what I told you in the first place? I knew the whole thing was a fairy tale. Uh, let's see, um... Uh, the old house, the one your grandfather built, uh, where would that be in relation to this house? Well, uh, it was only a one-room shack, really, and Dad said when he built this house, he put the living room right where the old house was. Mm -hmm. And this room where we're standing is the spot, huh? Yeah. Now, think, Les. 
Is there no place in this room that wasn't changed when your dad built the house? Well, uh, only the fireplace. Same one my grandfather built in the old days. Fireplace, huh? Come over here, Les. This stone right here in front, is that the same stone that was laid by your grandfather? Why, yeah, you can see. It's so worn down from people standing on it. There's a hollow place. Would you get me a big crowbar or something? I want to take a look under that stone. Sure, wait a minute. Going back here. Let's see now. Oh, here you are. If you think it'll do any good, go ahead. Thanks. It's coming. There. There. Now, now help me lift this. Yep. Yep. That. Man. That must weigh 400 pounds. Yep. There. That now, over, over there. there. Yep. Yep. There. Yeah. Look, a box. Yeah. Open it, Les. Bill. Bill, look at it. Gold dust. Pounds of it. Les, my friend, the fairy tale is now a true story. How can I thank you, fellas? Two wonderful bankers and a terrific bunch of forest rangers. How could you help out such a, a knucklehead as I am? Unless we knew that you'd act like a gentleman when the time came. Now, with the gold we found under your house, and the cattle the fellas brought in, you're all set to go back in business. Go back? I never was out. So we say it was just a, a, a inventory adjustment. I just had to take stock of things. See that God was so interested in me that he sent along some Christian friends. Not only to straighten out my business, but my spiritual life, too. Yes, Lester, we all thank the Lord for Christian friends. They're wonderful, understanding, ready to forgive, and even to forget. See you again next week, boys and girls, for more adventure with Rancho Bill! Stumpy Jenkins, the Ranger Bill's old sidekick, as I guess you all know, just adding a little extra word of thanks for getting yourself in on the program today. Always glad to have you along. And I hope you invite your friends, too, for we sure got lots of adventures to tell you about, and we don't want you to miss any of them. So you make sure to be there by your radio every week. Don't lose out on our next story.